Hey everybody, Mike from the Focus Garage here, and I told you guys in the last video that I would be doing a little walk around of the Ford Maverick that I picked up, and kind of an explanation of what I ordered and why I ordered it. So here we go. In this video, we're gonna be showing you around the truck and just kind of what I plan to do to it, what's already been done to it, and we'll go from there with it. So this is a 2023 Ford Maverick. I got it in cactus gray, which is funny because I'm a pretty big hater of the Nardo gray color, uh, but I'm pretty pleased with this because there are a lot of shades in green of it and you can kind of see here you know by the dumpster because it's a ford which is why we parked it there uh but it's <laughs> cactus gray this is the ecoboost xlt with the luxury pack and it is an fx4 so it's got the all-wheel drive and then i also do have the 4k tow package back here you can see with the hitch so we've got that another thing that you get with the luxury package is you get a light in the bed here which is switched turn on and off there you get a power inverter in the bed I also went with the bed liner that you can see here. Uh, but as far as modifications and things like that that I plan to do to it, bed lights there, we've got coming in LED for the cargo. And then we've also got some switchbacks coming for the front signals up here. These are orange. So these will be basically uh, orange for blinker and then white for running lights. Uh, one thing being an XLT that it does not get is that this is not an LED running light. It's just a piece of plastic there. Uh, FX4 gets some tow hooks down here. You get some tires that are kind of called all-terrains, but these are pretty much street tires. You're not really doing any kind of off-roading like that. Uh, they're Pirellis. It does have black wheels, which I'm typically not the biggest fan of black wheels, but I think with this paint color and everything like that, they look pretty good on this truck. As far as things that I've noticed right away and that I really, really like, I love these under seat storage bins because I do not have a tonneau cover on the truck right now, so everything in the bed is pretty much unsecured but these bins are absolutely massive if you ever wanna put anything underneath the seats. They fold up real easy, and you've also got storage space behind these seats as well. This folds down and there's tons of storage between the seats and then the bulkhead back there. Also with the luxury pack, you get another power inverter inside the cab here. Here's your Fitz Ford attachment where you can put cup holders and you know whatever else. And then we've got you know two different USB chargings there. I do have all weather floor mats in the truck in the front. And in the back, you can see here, here's what your XLT interior looks like. So it's trimmed with all that kind of orange and navy pier denim, as they call it. I dig the seats. These are heated. We've got a heated steering wheel. And then you've got the bigger digital gauge cluster here with the luxury package. So the orange carries through into the interior here. You've got on the handle, the vents. And then all down through here, you can see we've got all this different orange, which, you know, honestly, I don't mind. I think it's a good look for the vehicle. Something neat that I think Ford did an absolutely fantastic job with this truck with is taking cheap materials and making them feel more premium than they are. So, you know, instead of just being like a completely black interior with just hard touch plastic everywhere, don't get me wrong, you still have a ton of hard touch plastics, but they have this like textured panel. And then this is kind of like a soft vinyl. This is textured. It's just, this looks kind of like a, a fake stone or something, but it's clearly recycled plastic. Instead of just being like plain black and just very, very boring, they've got all these different colors, which make the interior feel brighter than it is, but it also makes it feel a little bit more upscale than it actually is. One of the biggest things that I wanted the luxury package for was to have this leather steering wheel that's heated and then the heated seats. I don't have remote start on my key fob, uh, but what I do have is the Ford Pass app where I can remote start the vehicle uh, from anywhere that I've got an inter internet connection on my phone. So as you guys have seen in past videos when I was talking about ordering this truck and everything like that, you'll know that I had originally ordered a uh, hybrid Maverick and then I had switched once they said that it was gonna be really hard to get your hands on a hybrid to this EcoBoost. And then when switching to the EcoBoost, I jumped to trim level. I added all-wheel drive and all these other things. And something that I'm noticing in the comments on the video about my buying experience, there's a couple different things that I want to address. The one biggest being that I didn't mention the dealership name. The whole reason with that is I've seen all kinds of crazy things uh, on the internet and on YouTube for dealerships and companies suing people for name defamation, even if what you're talking about is entirely true. Uh, I don't want to go to court. I don't want to have to fight anybody, even if what happened is the way it happened. What I will tell you, though, is that this dealership is in Illinois. They are south of Woodstock and they are west of Elgin. Do with that information as you will. I don't need people leaving reviews of dealerships they've never been to. I'm not trying to accomplish that. I'm just trying to show you guys that if something like this is happening to you, uh, what to watch out for when going to a dealership like this. So that's why I'm not naming the name. I'm not trying to you know, have any kind of legal battle with a dealer, even if what happened is true. Why would I make any of that up? No 
nobody wants to go through an experience like that. Another thing that I want to address is the vehicle itself. Now there's a lot of people who are saying, you know, why would you go through that much trouble for some crappy little Ford or something like that? And I've actually bought a couple of Fords now. And if you guys know anything about these, which I'm assuming most of the people, you know, talking poorly do not, this 2.0 EcoBoost is the better of the 2.0 EcoBoost, meaning that it's from the Focus ST. It's not the EcoBoost that has all the problems with the cracked heads and the water ingress into the cylinders and everything like that. It's a very, very solid engine. There are plenty of examples of people with this engine going 200,000 miles on them. So I'm not worried about the drivetrain at all. Sure, it's a cheap vehicle. I mean, it's based on an entry price of $20,000, $21,000 for the base front wheel drive hybrid. It's not gonna be some luxury car, but nobody else really makes a competitive vehicle to this at this time. Yes, the Santa Cruz is kind of there and you've got the Ridgeline as well, but this is you know, kind of a little bit more truck-like looking. I understand that it rides on a uh, Bronco Sport and Escape chassis, so it is just a crossover. Um, but for the price point that it's at and what it offers and what it does, I do really, really like that. I mean, Ridge Lines are like $40,000. A nicely equipped Santa Cruz is also right around there. Uh, to have all the options that this has for this price, it's kind of in a league of its own. Subaru and Toyota are probably gonna re be releasing something in the future that's competitive to this. But at the moment of this, nothing like this exists. Something else that I wanna touch on that a lot of people are addressing is people questioning why didn't I just walk you know the dealership won because they still sold you a car and while they did the counterpoint to that is that if I would have walked they would have ended up just selling this to somebody else for even more than I was going to pay for this vehicle if you follow the market on these Mavericks right now you'll know that they are in pretty high demand so for any dealership that has one kind of it's just like a retail in stock they're charging over MSRP for it. So if I would have walked on this, the dealer then would have had a retail unit that they could have sold for whatever price that they wanted to, typically five to $10,000 over sticker price. So they still would have sold the car. And then the worst thing for me is I ordered this, right? So regardless on if you don't like the Maverick or you like the Maverick, I ordered this. I waited seven months for this vehicle. If I would have walked, I can't get another one. The order banks are closed, so I can't just order another one with Ford. And then if I go to just get one retail on a dealership lot, like I said, you're paying five to 10,000 over sticker. So I just, and then the order banks are closed. So like you can't order another one and you can't walk into a dealership and get one. I mean, they're very, very hard to get. Plus there's a lot of different ways that you can option these things. And this thing is spec to how I wanted it to be. So if I would have just walked away, I would have been letting them win anyways, because then they get the vehicle that they can sell for even more money than they were going to sell to me for. I don't want to do that due to me wanting this truck. You know, I get it, right? The have to have it mentality and, you know, everything like that. I was prepared to walk. If I couldn't have reached a deal I was comfortable with, I was ready to leave because this is a secondary vehicle for me. It's going to be my daily driver, but it's not a vehicle that I need, air quote. So like, Yes, if they were going to be really, really firm on wanting markup or something like that or extra fees, I would have walked. But because we were able to get close enough and I knew that I could dispute the charge for the warranty and refinance and everything else like that, I was willing to buy the vehicle with them. I did do my part and I went online and I left reviews for that dealership. So on Google, on Yelp, on Dealer Raider, I've gone ahead and I've shared my experience with an honest rating so that way anybody that's looking into this dealer sees my experience and they understand what happened and what I went through. Because if you look up the reviews for this dealer, a lot of people have very, very similar experiences. Any of the positive reviews seem to be uh, fake and kind of like copy paste, but all the negative reviews share a very, very similar story. So that's why I did my part and written reviews are protected under different legalities than video reviews. So that's another reason why I didn't want to mention their name in the video review. So yes, it's real. It happened. It, it is what it is, right? Like I've got the truck and ultimately I'm very, very happy with the truck. It rides very, very well. It's smooth. It's quiet. It's pretty peppy with that uh, EcoBoost. It's like 270 torque or something like that. Uh, the steering's not totally numb. It's a good vehicle because it's very, very practical and it'll do what I need it to do. As far as modifications go, uh, I'm not gonna be doing anything major. People thought I meant I was gonna be doing like a turbo swap or something like that. Sure, you can tune these, but I'm not sure if that's something that I wanna do. But I've got just some, you know, blackout badges, uh, you know, the black and the orange in the front there. We've got window tint with a banner and then matching in the front there. I've got these FX4 ones that I'm gonna be switching out for. This will be orange instead of red. And then just on the back here, we've got some uh, tailgate mods so you can see Maverick letters and then the black and the orange and all that again. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that all-wheel drive badge, maybe black it out or take it off. 
Uh, like I said, I'm going to be getting a tonneau cover for it. I've hauled wheels in this thing. I've hauled mountain bikes in it already, which is pretty much the whole point of me wanting this truck and ordering this truck. I wanted something that, you know, could kind of serve a utilitarian purpose. And then I've got almost 800 miles on it already. And I've been getting like 26 miles per gallon, which for something, again, of this size, it's long. It's like 202 inches long, I believe. Um, and it's not aerodynamic at all. It's shaped like a brick. It, it's really good for something that has all-wheel drive, you know, gets good gas mileage. It's torquey. It, it, I don't want to say it's fun to drive because it's, a, I mean, it's, it's a truck, right? It's a car truck. It's not exactly engaging to drive, but it's better than lifeless, like regular vehicles, right? So I, I always like things that are a little bit different. I think getting this in this color with the FX4 package and everything like that kind of feeds into that, right? Like it, it feeds into the, the things that I wanted out of a vehicle. So that's why I wanted it, right? I, I didn't want to walk on something that I had been ordered and waited for and everything like that. I didn't want to let them win because ultimately they wanted me to walk, right? They don't care less if I walk. I've never had less leverage when buying a vehicle, as I was saying. And if I walked, they would have just sold it to somebody else for more money. So that's the whole reason on that why I didn't leave and just say, oh, forget about it then. You know, they, they win. I've been waiting seven months for it. I, I'm going to get it. And even if I have to sit there for three hours and argue with the most stubborn people in the world, I'm still going to get it. <laughs> So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I just wanted to make a follow-up video where I kind of show you guys the vehicle, you know, inside and out and everything like that. If you do have any questions, definitely drop them in the comments down below. Uh, as far as like build quality goes, uh, these are built in Mexico and a lot of people are saying that the build quality is not the best. I've got a little bit of a rattle in extremely cold temperatures, like 30 degrees and below. I've heard that it's due to the windshield. There's like locating pins or something like that that rub and vibrate. Um, but as far as like panel gaps and body gaps go and everything like that, I mean, it's, it's a cheap car. I mean, it's nothing crazy. Like everything seems to be pretty straight in line up. I've noticed that like this fender is kind of like not flush. You can see that there. It's perfectly flush on the other side. You got your perfect, you know, uh, <laughs> paint mismatch between the bumper and the fender there. I don't know. Like I said, everything seems to line up. Like these gaps aren't crazy or anything. Y you got to level set your expectations, right? Like it's not going to have the build quality of a Bugatti or a dumpster, but like it, Again, it's based off of a $20,000 vehicle, and if you understand that going into it, you'll have a realistic expectation. The other thing that I wanted to mention with it as well is that it has a warranty, right? People are like, oh, you know, it's going to break down. Your SOL is what you get for buying a Ford. Dude, it's got a warranty, right? And there are so many dealerships um, near in the area where I live that I'll never have to go back to this dealer that gave me this horrible experience to get the vehicle serviced. I've got plenty of other choices, and if I ever do need service or warranty, I'll be going somewhere else. I do plan to service this vehicle myself, so that's also not a big deal. Like oil changes and things like that, they'll be done in my garage by myself, so I'm not going to be at the mercy of a dealer for that. One last thing I wanted to address is why I didn't just order a Tremor Maverick, because I saw some of you asking that as well. With the Tremor Mavericks, you're only able to get the 2,000-pound towing package, not 4,000 pounds, and the gas mileage also takes a hit. Uh, due to the lift, the bigger tires, and the aerodynamics of some of the different bumper and stuff on the Tremor, you're getting gas mileage like in the teens in the city and the low 20s on the highway, which if you want the Tremor, that's fine, uh, but I'm not going to be really taking this off-road or anything too seriously like that, so the gas mileage hit was not worth it to me. I mean, that's like real truck gas mileage there. And then the 4,000-pound towing uh, package, the one thing that's appealing with that with me on the FX4 here is that it gets extra trans cooler and engine oil cooler with that 4,000-pound towing package, uh, which is pretty appealing to me. And then if I ever did want to tow something, you know, on the heavier side, I've got the ability to do that with the two different pin connectors um, on the harness part of the hitch there. So that's nice as well. So it's just those two things there. You know, I didn't like the lower gas mileage from the Tremor. And then I also didn't care for the lack of 4K towing option with the Tremor for a vehicle that I'm probably not going to really take off road much anyways. Like the, the gains just weren't there for me. So the FX4 is fine. I mean, it's not like a, something you can really be sending it off road and it's still a front wheel drive biased vehicle, but it gets aluminum skid plates and stuff like that as well. So that's why I was fine with the FX4 and did not feel the need to step it up to a Tremor. I think those are the major things that I wanted to address uh, in this video here. So if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. I'll be giving some more feedback about driving it and ownership experience over the next couple months here as I am able to get some miles on this vehicle. But I did just kind of want to make a video response to that last video there, uh, addressing everything regarding the Maverick buying and my first couple days of ownership into this Maverick. Uh, we're about two weeks into it now, and uh, that's where we're at so far. So thanks for checking this video out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one.